So this is some analysis of a rugby union player, a scrum half who came to see us through the previous lockdown. This was his first initial, initial session and this is just a look at an acceleration. I'm just going to play the video through. You can see that there's going to be some numbers that now accompany the video to give us a little bit more of an insight of what's going on. So for me, this video just shows that relationship of projection, switching and reactivity and how they lay the foundation for rhythm and rhythm is ultimately something that's coming out as really important to me. So if we rewind the video back to the start, we can see that his initial setup starts with this really flexed, flexed spine. And as we take the video on bit by bit, we can see that his first movements are of his shoulders lifting up, which tells me his initial projection has probably come from a bit more of a back extension than a hip extension. As we take that video through, I think because the initial projection is back led and not hip led he can't express himself in quite the same way which doesn't really give him that much time to organize this right leg to switch back and create some force and be prepared for the ground and i think if we just let that flow now again you'll be able to see that a little bit easier through full speed from there, I think he then has to pay for that initial projection. We can see this left leg now lands way out in front of his center of mass. Effectively, I think that now has to reach to get any stride length. He then has to pull himself through. His shin has to drop and roll to create any push at all, which for me is just excess ground contact time. We see the same thing on the next step where the right leg now lands in front, probably as a result of the last step, then has to pull himself down a track, shin has to drop and roll, and again we get probably some excessive ground contact time. As we then just let it play through, we can see at 10 meters that he's got a final velocity, a final speed of 7.2. We'd really be looking for team sport males to be considered a decent accelerator. We would want that closer to eight meters per second. If we dive in a little bit further into the numbers, we can see that air times look a little bit hurt and a little bit fractured as a result. 46 down to 37, shoots up to 63 and then starts its steady rise. 175 increases to 184 when we should see it decreasing, drops to 171 but really there's not much difference between the first step and the third step when we should see some decent decrease so we're seeing this really fractured rhythm all, all as a result of this initial projection the initial projection affected the switch the switch affected the reactivity and as a whole the rhythm is hurt and ultimately the final speed has been dramatically affected but although we've discussed rhythm We've discussed switching and reactivity. We've said ultimately our problem is that initial projection. So if we're gonna make any change to that final speed, we have to attack projection. We break our sessions up 
with general skills, specific skills and speed skills. General skills are, are usually tend to be something that we want to tick over in the background. Specific skills are usually targeted at the speed skills that we want to attack on that day. So this is where we're going to address our intervention in our specific skills. So I'm just gonna let this play through and then we'll talk through each individual exercise. If we're going to address projection, we need to make sure that our exercises have some really specific components to them. First and foremost, they need to be explosive actions. They need to be explosive from a static start and possibly entail a split position because ultimately that's where he's going from. He's going from a static start in a split stance two point position. It needs to probably have some opportunities where we can address projection angle and then layer in some switching and some reactivity so we can really piece the puzzle together as a whole. This first exercise has all those three components for me. We're essentially asking him to load and explode from a split position project himself up, exchange his legs in the air, and then get out of it, out of the hole reactively as well. And you can see even there, even though it's just one, he starts with a really nice disciplined spine and trunk. As he tires a little bit, he starts to just lose that position a little bit as well. Next exercise is our med ball throws and ultimately standing position, horizontal projection. But again, this is not just an exercise, it's a coaching opportunity. So for me, this first med ball throw is exactly what we were seeing in the first video. We're getting a flex spine, just a lift of the shoulders, no hip projection, and the ball essentially just flies up. Whereas if we whiz that onto the next one and where we ended up, get a better spine position, shoulders are going a bit more forward now, hips are through and are now projection and now being the main driver. The ball goes forward at a really nice angle. And we actually get a little bit of follow through as well from that med ball throw. And that probably tells us a lot about the angle that he's come out at. He's probably come out at a nice scary angle rather than just going up and just being safe. Again, just bringing awareness to just having to come out from a static position, probably just making that a little bit harder the same way as we would do with a resisted run. Harder to come out of that deep position, that lunge position. And you can see the first one. There's not really any drop of the shin. The right leg just swings through. He loses his spine and there's just no hip projection at all. It just goes up in the air. Whereas when we get to our 
and kneeling start. Shin drops. Angle of the trunk is loads, is in line with that shin. We've now got a, a hip led projection that really goes forward at a great angle. And we get a nice active switch back as well. And then finally, we just piece that together with some resisted runs. And you can see how he starts. Progresses a little bit more, progresses a little bit more to finally our final run where we can see he's really sort of piecing that puzzle together now of really going forward, controlling his spine, getting good projection, switching back, attacking back at the ground and then getting off it as well. So we targeted projection. We gave him opportunities to calibrate that new projection with some switching and reactivity elements in our exercise selection. What was the result of that? I'm going to let it play through and then we'll chat through the video again in a bit more detail with the numbers there to show. So what's our first part of call? Well, we want to see what the effect our intervention has had. And we can see a 7.6 as opposed to our 7.2 at 10 meters. So we've made some significant improvement. If we go back to the start and take a look about at how he got, how he got there. So we can see his initial setup position, much better spine position. His shoulders and his whole body move forward. His spine stays quiet, which allows his hip to do work. Now we know from cross extension reflex, the relationship that the glute and hip flexor have together if the glute does more work, it allows a bit more space for hip flexion. Now people talk about big shapes. Big shapes are essentially when someone waits there and loves time in the air to essentially get this really cool photo of this position. Whereas actually big shapes are cool if at this point here when we reach hip flexion, optimal hip flexion, optimal glute extension, we actually reverse it and pull it back down with our glute and our hamstring. If we do that effectively, we can get our ankle underneath our center of mass, which gives us an opportunity to be reactive off that, off that step because we've got essentially a stiff ankle. We can see that through the numbers, we have got a bigger pushing phase so we've got a better horizontal projection. We've got less airtime, even though we've pushed for longer and we've created this big shape, we've reduced the airtime because at that end, that end point, we've pulled our leg back down. So it's in the right position to create a nice crisp ground contact time here. We see rhythm is, has improved as well. And I'll just take it on just onto this next step. We can see rhythm is improved. Airtime is just steadily increasing here rather than this big dip that we had. And we said was not really effective to create a switch. He wasn't really, he didn't really have time to be prepared for the ground. And we've got ground contacts that are reducing as well. 
from there we can see that this line here just drops a little bit is center of mass just drops a little bit and if we take it on a little bit further just to have a look at air times and ground contact times again we can see that there's just been this little decrease in air time and there's this little rise in ground contact time as well so what we're saying here is that even there after this significant improvement there's still room to improve. We can still make that better. So over to you guys now. If you've enjoyed this three part series, I would love to know how it's helped you or even if you've just enjoyed it, drop me a thumbs up in the comments below. If you want to be really brave, get involved with some discussion, drop me a comment and let me know how you would still keep improving this acceleration.